Welcome to lecture number 31 in ECE 463-663 Modern Control, Variable Structure Systems, also known as Bang-Bang Control. Now, variable structure systems are very similar to full state feedback, where I have a system, your x dot equals ax plus bu. I'm feeding back all the states times the feedback gain kx and have an input gain kr. The difference is I have this relay function. This is sort of how anti-lock brakes work in cars as well. When you slam on the brakes on ice, you can hear the brakes chattering. This relay is a type of chattering or bang-bang control, also known as variable structure systems. It gives the system some unique properties. Uh, some of those properties, it behaves as a reduced order system. It's robust to disturbances and nonlinearities. Uh, but the result, however, is the input chatters, hence the name bang-bang control. And there's a similar version, saturating control. It's about the same thing, but instead of it being a vertical line, this has a slight slope to it. That gets rid of the chatter, but you wind up with a slight steady state error. This lecture is looking at how do you design a variable structure system. Uh, basically the same thing as full state feedback with a slight variation. Now, a problem with this type of control is it's nonlinear. With nonlinear feedback systems, you have a problem trying to prove stability. With nonlinear systems, eigenvalues don't apply. Poles and zeros don't apply. So likewise, it's fairly hard to, dip it, to define or to, to prove whether or not the system's stable. For nonlinear systems, we only have three proofs of stability. There's hyperstability, H-infinity, and Lyapunov. Now what H-infinity does is if I have a feedback system like this, the closed loop gain is, say, G of S as a gain of A. It's A plus A squared plus A cubed. When the, or when the phase shift is 180 degrees. One way to prove stability is if A is always less than one, then I can never have positive feedback where the gain is one plus one plus one plus one going to infinity. That's the idea of H, H infinity. If I can show that the loop gain is less than one at all frequencies, then guarantee the closed loop system stable, even if it's not linear. That's very conservative. And it does have applications though. Uh, one application is perturbations. If I have a system that's stable and I perturb it, is the perturbed system still stable? Here the idea, this is the perturbation. If the perturbation is zero, it's stable, assuming it was open loop stable. I can then look at how large the perturbation can be until I go unstable. And the idea is that if the perturbation times your system is less than one, I know it's stable. That's H infinity. Hyperstability is a slight variation on that. I go unstable when I have positive feedback. The phase of G of S is minus one. If the gain is bigger than one at that frequency, the gain is one plus one plus one. With hyperstability, I try to show that the phase shift of G of S never gets to 180 degrees. If it never gets to 180, I never have positive feedback. I never go unstable. That's useful in model reference adaptive control. A third definition of stability for nonlinear systems is Lyapunov. This is what we use for bang-bang control. The idea behind Lyapunov stability is if I can define an energy function, meaning it's positive definite, and then I can show that the change in energy is negative definite, then the system must be stable. I've got energy in the system, the energy is always decreasing, it can't go to infinity. As an example, suppose I had the following system, x dot equals minus 3x. This is linear at the poles at minus 3, so it is stable. I can use Lyapunov stability to prove it's stable. Here, the first step is to find an energy function, a function which is positive definite, like 1 half x squared. Now take the derivative. The derivative is x, x dot, which is substituting minus 3x squared. Minus 3x squared is negative definite. So here I have the energy is positive definite. The change in energy is negative definite. This system stable. Uh, an example where it's somewhat more useful is I can find the range of K for stability. If I have the following system with full state feedback, I could find the range of K for stability. Again, what I do is to find an energy function. Here, 1 half x squared is, a, is one possible energy function. Take the derivative and substitute. As long as the derivative is negative definite, I'm stable, which says that as K is bigger than minus 3, V dot is negative definite. So the condition for stability is like I'm guaranteed stable for k bigger than minus 3. With Lyapunov stability, it doesn't prove that you're unstable if, it's, if this fails. It just proves that you are stable if this is true. 
Uh, third condition, this is leading more into bang bang control. Suppose I have a system in state space, x dot equals ax plus bu, and then I define a sliding surface, sigma equals cx. This is very similar to y equals cx, but instead of being my output y, this is a sliding surface, sigma. Now define the energy function to be 1 half sigma transpose sigma, a positive definite function. Take the derivative, and if I can show that sigma sigma dot is less than zero, then I'm stable. Uh, substituting, take the derivative of sigma, I get cx dot, plug it in for x dot, I wind up with, if this function is negative definite, I'm stable. So let's suppose I'm bounding. I know, suppose I assume that bound cax is bounded. If I choose u such that cbu is greater than cax, then the sine of u is the sine of this term. Uh, in that case, if I choose u such that x transpose c transpose u is less than zero, or u is minus alpha times the sine of cx, uh, then v dot is negative definite. And I pick alpha to be large enough so that this is negative definite, so that this is true. What you wind up with is a bang-bang controller. This is guaranteed stable even if the plant is unstable. I have proven that v dot is negative when v squared is positive. The energy is positive. Uh, a couple examples. Let's take a double integrator as my plant, and let's define the sliding surface to be 1, 1. Uh, assuming x is bounded by 10, it depends upon the states, but let's just, just assume for now that x is bounded by 10. That says that I can pick alpha to be greater than 10, and now can choose u to be minus 10 times the sine of cx, which is the sine of x plus x dot. The step response now looks like this. The blue line is the output. The green line is the velocity. Those are your two states, x and x dot. Notice this behaves like a first order system with a pole at minus one. That's my sliding surface. My sliding surface sigma is x plus x dot, or s plus one times x. That's the property of sliding mode control, or bang bang control. I pushed the closed loop system to the zero. If I look on the phase plane, where I plot x versus x dot, what happens is I give it a, a, an initial condition, say x is zero, I want to drive it to one. I'll apply an input of plus 10, drive it to the sliding surface. This is the eigenvector for pole at minus one. As soon as I hit the sliding surface with that eigenvector, I'll chatter into the origin. Hence the name sliding mode control or bang bang control. If I look at the input, the input is chattering between plus 10 and minus 10. That's the name bang bang control. So variable structures is known as bang bang control, sliding mode control, because when I hit the eigenvector, I slide into the origin. And uh, another nice property is it behaves like a reduced order system. Here I have a second order system. When I hit the sliding surface, it behaves like a first order system, a system with a pole at s equals minus one. There's a slight variation on it called uh, saturated control. Rather than having a, a relay, I just have a slight slope, a large slope on my function and a clip at plus minus 10. What that does, this behaves almost exactly like a bang bang controller, except that instead of chattering, I wind up on the sliding surface or on this, this linear part of the game. If I apply it to the same system, what I wind up with is I drive the system to the sliding surface, and then it decays as e to the minus t. My output y bridge with the steady state value as e to the minus t, based upon the sliding surface s plus 1 times x. On the input, however, where I still hit the sliding su surface, I approach the eigenvector at minus 1, and then I slide to the origin along that eigenvector. But the input no longer saturates, or is no longer chattering between plus 10 minus 10, as soon as I hit the sliding or hit that high gain region, I just move into the origin along that high gain region. So saturating control is almost like bang bang control, just a slight variation on it. I get rid of the chattering. In return, I have a slight steady state error. Uh, so let's go on to a little more complicated system. Suppose I have a fourth order system and I want to design a bang bang or variable structures controller. Here I've got a system and state variable form. 
if I can place the zeros to the transfer function, I can tell you how it's going to behave. Essentially, what happens is I've got poles and zeros. As I close the feedback loop, the poles approach the zeros. If the gain is infinity, I'm at the zeros. And that's what's happening with bang-bang control. I've got zeros in this transfer function. On the chattering line, the gain is infinity, so the poles go to the zeros. And I've got n minus 1 zeros, so what I wind up with is a reduced order system. A system only has n minus 1 closed loop poles. Those poles are at the zeros, and I'm chattering. So suppose I want to place the zeros at minus 1, minus 1, minus 1. Then the numerator polynomial would be s cubed plus 6s squared plus 11s plus 1. So that'd be the numerator polynomial that I want. One way to do that is if I'm in controller canonical form, this is the numerator polynomial. I can go back and convert these your C matrix to your state variable form using the state transformation matrix with uh, Bhaskura and wind up with the feedback gains in your state variable form. And as a check, if I close the feedback loop with a really high gain, the poles go to the zeros, one pole goes to minus infinity, the other poles go to minus one, minus two, minus three. And that's where I pick the zeros to be minus one, minus two, minus three. So these feedback gains place the zeros at minus one, minus two, minus three. That's your s cubed plus six s squared plus 11 s plus six. If I then uh, do that, have a bang bang controller or use that as kx, my zeros are now at minus one, minus two, minus three. My closed loop system behaves as a third order system with poles at minus one, minus two, minus three. If I look at it in phase plane, I've got three eigenvectors. It goes the dominant eigenvector, the pole at minus one, which is this guy. And if you look at the input, it chatters. I apply an input of plus 10 until I hit the sliding surface, then I chatter. This is the name bang bang control or sliding mode control. If instead I change the feedback control law to be a saturating function, what I wind up with is really about the same thing, but instead of chattering between plus 10, minus 10, I hit the high gain region and then go to the origin. And have about the same output. One thing to note, I could have complex poles as well, or complex response. If I want the closed loop system to have poles at minus 1, plus or minus j3, and minus 3, that just says that I want the zeros to be s cubed plus 5s squared plus 6s, 16s plus 30. This has roots where I, where I want. The feedback gains to put the zeros at minus 3, minus 1, plus or minus j3 would be this. Converting back to state variable form, I want to feedback the gains of 1, 0, 10, 19. So if I do that, have this my feedback gain, have it run into a relay, here's my response. There's my pole at minus 1 plus minus j3, the oscillation. If I plot this in the phase plane, I approach the sliding surface. Once I hit it, I then spiral into the origin as a log spiral, decaying as e to the minus t right, with pole at minus 1 plus minus j3. And of course, the input chatters. That's the property when you have that relay. If instead I replace the input with a saturating function, everything looks about the same except the input instead of chattering now looks like this. So that's the kind of the idea of bang bang control or variable structures. It's exactly what we looked at before. It looks just like a full state feedback system with kx and kr, except in this case, kx defines the zeros of the transfer function, pick kx to place n minus 1 zeros, add the relay function, once I'm on the sliding surface, the closed loop poles are at the zeros. Uh, that kind of wraps up 463 modern control. We've got several different ways to design feedback controllers. We've got full state feedback. We have server compensators. We have linear quadratic Gaussian methods, LQG, LTR. And the last method is variable structures control. All similar methods that use full state feedback to define your control law.